Welcome to Hashtag 52 Needs. And this week we are talking about intimacy. And I, I, I just love that I have with me Kim Dunlop, who is a property advisor, dating and developmental mindset coach, who supports individuals, investors, and corporates in relationship building and achieving their personal and professional goals through understanding and accessing their strengths and powers. Power and powers, right? <laughs> Welcome, Kim. Okay, so we're talking about intimacy and specifically intimacy at work. Now, can you actually have intimacy at work? What do you think? I think you can. Um, I think um, at work, um, there's different relationships, but I think business is personal. Mm. Angela, I've always thought business is personal. And I've always built relationships um, throughout my working career, um, really on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. And it's always been on an emotional level where I've, I've been wanting to understand the individual, like stepping into their shoes. Mm -hmm. And in stepping into their shoes, it was understanding how they would do a task. And so um, I remember someone saying to me, Kim, it doesn't matter how much you know until, you, you know, people know how much you care. Mm -hmm. and and in and in that piece in a working environment it was like a natural thing that came out for me I was always understanding and always seeking to understand how someone would do something and it might be different to the way I did things um, but it was always stepping into their shoes and I think it's really important you know to create work um, you know in um, relationships or intimacy within you know working relationships because you're with people like eight hours a day <laughs> so, well, you spend more time with people at work often than we spend with people at home exactly and yeah. and it requires um it requires um it requires you to actually um place um it's a partnership I look at it as a partnership that's that's really what I look at it as it's a yeah. two-way partnership and um you know, by meeting the needs of others, looking at their objectives and looking at understanding their challenges. So I think that's really important, you know, in a working environment and creating intimacy. If you can look at the needs, objectives and challenges within a working environment of someone else, um, that will go a long way in yeah. terms of your intimacy. Yeah. So, Well, I mean, when I know somebody really well, it doesn't need... I, I think for me, intimacy at work doesn't mean that I need to share my deepest, darkest secrets. I also don't need to take somebody home. I always joke, you don't need to take somebody home for a barbecue on the weekend. You know, it's, you can, you can get to know somebody really well at work in the context where, you know, and, and again, you can, there's, the, there's this intellectual intimacy and there's emotional intimacy, but it's, it's about, I think at work to have both is really, really useful and it's not about loving someone from that place of, oh, I'll give you my life. But it's trusting them. Because often when, we, when we're at work, we hold back, right? I mean, I have worked with people and we've done, we've done I, I did one exercise at, in a workshop once where somebody I said, so did you find out something about people that really surprised you? And one of the people said, well, I've just talked to this woman and she has three children and I've sat next to her for the past three years. Oh, I can't remember how long. And I never knew that. I was like, OK, so there's a really big separation between work and home going on. And again, sometimes people need that. But what can we share so that we can trust each other in such a way that we can really show up at work? Because when we have better communication, it reduces stress. We can accomplish more. There are all sorts of benefits, right? Yeah. And, and look, I think that's a really good point, Angela. It's um, having respect for someone who you know might not want to share their deepest, darkest secrets. And I think that's really important to identify. Yeah. And I've, worked, I've definitely worked with people who are not outwardly um, communicating their life story. Mm. And so it's just becoming aware and stepping back and just, you know, seeing whether or not there's any topics that you could talk about and you know it could be them building a house or they could be um you know their children could be um you know 
doing yeah. some activity um, that keeps it kind of on the surface and you can slowly build up exactly. that relationship. And I think that's really important um, mm -hmm. to be aware of that, that you will get some people that will share their whole life story and they're quite happy to do that because they need to download. <laughs> and, so, um, and, and yet there's others that are very, you know, shy. They're, they're shy, they're quiet, they're more introverted. But then they also can provide an intellectual, and that's why I love it when you say that, use those, you know, those two analogies, having the emotional and the intellectual, um, mm. and then separating that because there's two, there's, there's different aspects within a working environment and a relationship. Um, the way people, you know, would complete a task, you know, in a work environment, and someone could be quite structured yeah. and very process driven. And yet you might be given a task that requires someone to be creative. And so it's then being able to support and provide that resource to people to then build that trust um, with your teammates um, yeah. and colleagues to be able to lead them. And I think what comes with that is actually a level of vulnerability that you can share by sort of saying, I don't know how to do this task either, but we're going to do it as a group and we're going to do it as a team. And I think that's really great, you know, when you can kind of have those conversations. So it always points back to those healthy conversations um, and then assisting people to help them feel more comfortable and more trusting and then slowly yeah. starting to open up. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's really, as you said, you know, having that trust to be open and sharing The one thing that, in my experience, people really hold on to are their good, their ideas, their creative ideas. And we often require at work to go into brainstorming. So I have these meetings where we're supposed to share our ideas. And I, I, have, I have run countless strategic and creative planning sessions. Um, and often what, put, what stops people dead in their tracks is this, no, that's not going to work or no. Or really that idea or that old chestnut again. And that's not what builds intimacy. Intimacy is when somebody comes and says, I have this idea and the other person goes, that sounds interesting. Let me think about that. Or let's explore that. Or what can we do to make that happen? Or whatever it is. It's not the but or no, or whatever it may be. So when we have that trust then we, we, we're no longer holding on to the ideas like they're gold nuggets, you know, going, oh, I'm not going to share that with that person. But we can go, here you go. And that, that at work brings everybody, moves everybody forward. Yeah, and I really like that because what came up for me um, in that instance, you sharing that story, was um, having flexibility around um, your strengths. Mm -hmm. And what I talk to in the corporate world is um, I talk to people specifically around exercising or over-exercising their strength. And yeah. so whilst I might be an extrovert um, and have a very loud voice, it's then giving the opportunity for others to speak up. And so it's then creating that flexibility and allowing others, which builds that trust, Angela. And I think it's so important to then offer that. And I've had guys in my team where I've allowed them to lead a meeting and the actual sense of empowerment through that process, they turn around and they say to me, oh, but Kim, don't you want to use your voice? And I said, no, I don't need to. Yeah. Because it's then building that trust through that process. And it's just a beautiful organic process where you can allow someone else to step into your shoes mm -hmm. and lead the team. And they can do it in their own way. And I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of merit in doing that and um, building that trust within an environment um, through, you know, in the working environment. I yeah. think um, so stepping back sometimes and allowing others to lead, Absolutely. you know, totally. um, but giving them that support and that backing, mm -hmm. you know, which then builds that trust within them and saying, I've got your back. Yeah. So, well, I always say to, I always say as a leader, your job is to make yourself redundant and to create new leaders. And the, the people can only do that when you give them the space to step into a leadership role. The question I've got for you is, as a leader, how much do you want to share to create intimacy and what's oversharing? I mean, I guess that's, that's a very global question, but I thought we could maybe explore that for a minute. Yeah, and I think it's a great question. Um, yeah, it's... Um... I think there's a fine dance with it um, around, you know, I, I think it probably goes back to pacing and slowly pacing um, 
and and really just expanding a conversation and seeing where it lands with someone. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you are leading um, in actually sharing something to see whether it actually ignites something intellectually in someone else. Mm-hmm. So it's then trying to seek to understand within another whether or not that's something that they will expand their awareness um, or the conversation through mm-hmm. them then sharing. And so you could start to share by leading um, and knowing oneself. And I think probably another critical thing which has just come to me is um, just setting a framework, creating mm-hmm. a framework um, right in the beginning, whether it's for a meeting, whether it's for a conversation that you're having with someone. And when you're leading self, you have a strong understanding of yourself. And so you can actually share with someone, you know, how you will support them and be a resource and how you will allow them to step in and be the leader. So it's creating that flexibility. Um, Yeah, it's really um, opening that up. And then just noticing their body language, you know, through that process. Um, Yeah, so I hope Mm. that that answers the question. But (laughs) there's so much that can be explored. Oh, yeah. No, I was just thinking it's the, it's risk taking, it's allowing people to take a risk. Well, maybe not, not allowing, but giving people the opportunity to take a risk without coming down on them like a, like a, um, like a, you know, brick wall. What is it? No, not coming down on them like a ton of bricks, mixing my metaphors here and (laughs) saying, oh, that was a really bad idea or whatever it might be. Again, it's that, that acceptance, it's the ability to listen to somebody and saying, you know what, I'm hearing you this is what really matters to you. And let's just go with that because it's just so important that at work, especially when we're spending so much time contributing to somebody else's vision, possibly, you know, that, that there's that sense of somebody is really seeing me for my contribution. Yes. Um, and that, that I think is, it really matters because we've, we have so many people who have lost their sense of purpose at work. Um, who are just literally just presencing. So they're just there. And when we have that connection with somebody, it can really spark us. It can really, you know, really in, inspire us to show up. Yeah. And I think um, speaking freely, speaking freely, and um, that's what sometimes is not created in the workplace, mm-hmm. is being able to speak your truth and speak mm-hmm. freely um, from your perspective and sharing that. But not being um, afraid to actually share that perspective, Mm. which could be different to someone else. Um, But knowing how to then frame that and saying, look, I've got something that's a little bit different, but sharing that. And I think the other key thing that comes to mind is giving and receiving feedback. Yes, absolutely. Totally. in In a constructive and very objective way, I think that, in working in, um, you know, the workforce or the corporate world, I think it's really important that we change those ways of giving and receiving feedback and creating really healthy frameworks yeah. around that um, because we are quick to judge mm. um, because someone is not doing it the way that we're supposed to wanting it to be done, that yeah. there's this criticism, but it's not actually then seeing them to be able to give them the opportunity to speak freely and while someone might be structured, another person might not, but they're still getting the same message across. And so yeah. it's allowing them to be themselves and their yeah. way of being. Yeah. 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 Which I really I really think boosts people's confidence. I really think that totally. that actually boosts confidence. Yeah. I was just when you were talking, I was just I uh, was just reflecting that um or just popped into my mind that I had a I had a my previous assistant had been working for me for quite a while. It was, I think it was about a year. And I had always said to her, you know, it's like, give me feedback. You know, it's like something not working for you. If something's working for you, tell me what doesn't work. Tell me also what works. And we were having a conversation and she was saying something. And I said, see, that's the kind of feedback I want. And, I, and she's like, you really do want feedback. And I was like, yeah, of course I do. And she's like, well, you know how many people say they want feedback and then you give them feedback and they really didn't want it. And it becomes, it backfires because, you know, cross the line or too open or whatever it is. And I was like, well, you're not giving me feedback on who I am. You're giving me feedback on what I do and how I can be a better leader and how I can be better at my job and how I can create better results. And that is really important to me because if I don't get feedback, how am I going to evolve? How am I going to learn? 
And she was like, huh. She was really confused because she said, so many people don't want that. And I'm like, well, I do. So please, feedback away. But I, I just wanted to point, I think what you just shared is so critical and it's so poignant. Um, you know, it's not who you are. And it was on, you know, what you're doing. And I think that's what people miss, Angela. And I think that's just so incredibly important what you've just shared. It's, you know, that's the truth. It's not about who you are personally, but I think people take it personally. Yeah. And so, you know, whether or not we need to include in the framework, but this is not personal. Mm -hmm. It's just actually just around how you're operating and how I want to support you in getting your needs and objectives met in the workplace, you know, and as a leader, that's the piece. And if we're not supporting ourselves in that current environment, we cannot support a team of people, you know, because you're dealing with emotions, you're dealing with intellectual aspects, you're dealing with a process, mm -hmm. you're dealing with um, commercial, you know, outcomes. Yes. So if you're not achieving that, then that's when the burnout and the pressure gets building up because yes. you're not working collaboratively. I think you're working competitively. Absolutely. And I think yes. that's the piece that needs to change, that we're not doing this on our own. We're working as a team, you know, in any environment, in any environment. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And that's the willingness to, again, I mean, it's not, it's not sharing your deepest, darkest secrets. It's not about going here I am, you know, like, you know, I'm bearing my soul to you, but it's about, as you said, creating the framework beforehand and saying, so how do we want to do this? Again, as you said, love languages play a big role. Like my assistant was definitely somebody who needed to hear words. Touching or hugging was not something she really did like, you know? Whereas I've worked with people who just would go and do have spontaneous hugs. You know, again, it doesn't, it does, it, that, that, that is the kind of relationship you, you create by listening to people, by going what matters to them and not going, this is what matters to me and come hell or high water, I'm going to get that. I'm going to, and, and especially if I'm the leader, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to get my needs met. Mm, mm, you know, it's a reciprocal thing. It's, it's everybody together, but it's about having the discussion of what really matters and people got just go into this this is the culture, this is how it works, and we're not going to talk about it. Whereas yeah, I yeah. think you need to, we need to talk about what matters to us, how, and how are we going to get there? Yeah, and um, what came to me just then is um, I went to a meeting, Angela, and because my language of love is physical touch, mm -hmm. I um, actually touched a gentleman on his elbow. And so I'd seen, you know, in previous um, sort of, intimacy around building rapport and that 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 would be acceptable to actually mm. touch on the elbow and it was quite interesting how that wasn't received very well and I felt like I'd broken rapport because I was projecting my language of love onto someone else and not recognizing their language of love that that he felt a bit um yeah like uncomfortable if I was mm. to say you know um uncomfortable but in the end, we didn't break rapport fully. It was just more that he was sharing with me a perspective saying that it might be received in a different way right. if I was to continue to do that with other gentlemen. So okay. I thought, so yeah, so it's interesting how different people's perspectives, um, mm. you know, and so I was very appreciative of hearing that and since shared it with a few friends who also have a language of love in the, in the corporate world around touch. And, um, and it's just being mindful of that. It's really yeah. being, as you say, it's, it's not sharing your deepest and darkest secrets and just being mindful of like knowing when to open up that conversation and slowly building that trust yeah. over time. Yeah. I find it really useful to say to somebody, you know, I'm a, I'm a touchy feely person and occasionally I might burst into spontaneous hugs. Would that be okay with you? And if somebody <laughs> says, no, it's not, then that's okay. But it, I've also had, you know, like touching somebody. I mean, there's a, there's an HR approved mother zone that's between, as you said, it's between the elbow and the shoulder. It's not even on the shoulder. It's just to the side of the shoulder. That's the supposedly the, you know, the neutral zone. But even for some people, that could be could be a risky thing. But I've I I sometimes you know I've touched people and then go, oops, sorry, I just touched you. I hope that was okay. And sometimes people go, mm, no, not really. Um, but it's the trust to be able to say, no, not really. 
you know, yes. when, when there's not that kind of trust, people will just suffer in silence. And then you end up with all sorts of interesting scenarios where people feel, you know, bullied and harassed and in extreme cases, but it doesn't build the intimacy. So it's opening the dialogue, you know, again, and as you said, you listen to the gentleman when he said, no, that was not really something I enjoy or that wasn't appropriate or whatever he said. And you went, okay, great, I'm learning. Mm. And, and I think another good topic to kind of talk about, because you just said the word bullying. Mm. Um, I think that's really important because even intimacy, building intimacy in the workplace um, can also come back to our um, language and our tone and our delivery and how we sometimes, you know, use um, words, you know, in a way that could be, you know, delivered in not a very nice tone. Yeah. And I think that would disconnect the intimacy uh, relationship with someone. And so it's just knowing when it's appropriate as well to even like swear, um, you know, if you're in a meeting, um, you know, creating that framework and actually having that understanding and trust within that group um, and then working out whether or not that might impact someone. So whether it's the, the language of love with physical touch, and as you pointed out, you know, that person said, no, no, I actually don't like that, but they had the trust to actually respond and yeah. give you feedback. Yeah. And um, it's just creating those healthy lines of, you know, giving and receiving feedback. Absolutely. And, yeah. um, which I think is really, yeah, really helpful for anyone in a relationship at work. Yeah. Okay, so summarizing, and um, please help me out there as well, is safety really matters? It's creating safety. So it's creating an environment where people can really show up. And as a leader, that's really, really important. Um, it's about sharing slowly, building up the trust and the, and the intimacy by developing that kind of rapport that is not necessarily about going into deep, deep topics, but it's about that connection that allows us to share who we are in and at work in such a way that it that we become more productive, that we can communicate better. And I think what that does, and this is for me, that's really important, is it reduces stress. If I can show up as who I am and I know I'm being received as who I am, because we've got that that you know, that emotional, that intellectual, that, you know, that kind of the intimacy. I will enjoy going to work. I'll go to work in the morning, you know, and again, this might be remote even. It doesn't matter, but I can sit down at my computer in a totally different way than if I go, oh my God, that doesn't feel safe. I don't know what to talk to this person about, you know, again, whatever reasons, either oversharing, undersharing, any of that. Yeah, I think you're absolutely summarized it beautifully. Um, I think it, it does come back to the connecting, you know, the connectivity mm. and then like having that safe place, but the listening and turning up as yourself. Mm. And then you've got the accountability as well, because you're able to be accountable with your way of being. And I think that really then points to us, you know, and going, I'm actually being heard mm -hmm. and listened to and my way of being, and then you become more productive. So you've got those three things, connectivity, accountability, and productivity. Yes. And, and there is this sense of, um, um, there's a sense of ownership as well as like, you're wanting to actually then do more. A yeah. lot of people don't realize that the more you can inject into that piece, people want to do more. And I've yeah. had people in my team who have over, you know, done things and, you know, they're just always on point mm. because they actually want to be there. And it's yeah. like um, through that safe environment and that relationship, I think it's just fundamental. So um, with building strong, you know, strong relationships, you know, and as you said, long-term relationships that you've had even in your personal life. Yeah, yeah, intimate and, and this is the thing is what I love is, is seeing people that I haven't seen for a few years and we, you know, we used to work together or whatever it is. And we just slot right back into that space, that intimate space together. And it's like, you know, there's been a fold in time and it's like, we've just reached and it was like, oh, how was your weekend? It doesn't matter that there were five years in between exactly. right back. <laughs> and that's beautiful. And I, that's that I've had that happen with people I work with and I've had that happen with clients, but with colleagues and, you know, mentors and all that. And that's that that for me is a sign of true intimacy. Oh, I agree. And I can pick up the phone, Angela, to people who I've known 
30 years ago and yeah. I could reach out to them in in the corporate world and say hi how are you going and you can yes. pick up where you last left off yeah. you know things have actually changed a little bit you might have had kids got married and <laughs> you know a, little, a few little, a little things, things in between yeah. <laughs> but um but to be able to build that yeah. through that relationship and we've all got it within us we have yeah. absolutely you know? so yeah well I've got so many more topics I wanted to talk to you about, but um, and we might have to do that in a second installment. Thank you so much, Kim. This has been absolutely delightful, and I hope it's provided everybody with lots of food for thought. And um, thanks again, Kim, and I'll see everybody next week. Thanks for joining us. 